Hello, I'm Mac, at least for a day, and everything's going to be okay. This is going to be part two of the sculpting and level creation master class. Let's go ahead and do his next video. Trees are awesome because they add overhead volume without getting in the way of the player too much. They also add depth to the scene and something for the player to navigate around. Dreams makes it very easy to create them. You can make a forest in no time. <laughs> Trees come in all shapes and sizes, so I usually make three to five basic variations. I start by creating a new sculpture using the stamp shape tool and the curve shape. Then I choose an appropriate fleck and a nice dark brown color. I use the shape editor to make the curve long and tree trunk shaped. While I'm in there, I set the looseness and a little bit of soft blend to merge the trunk and branches together. I clone the trunk shape and scale it to make the branches and roots. It's wise to look at some reference of trees from the kind of environment you're making if you want a little realism. Different trees have different arrangements of branches, so I use that to create a variety of trees. Once I'm happy with the branches, I create a new sculpture for the foliage. I'm going to use the green tumbler colour, but you can make your own choice. I'll tint the clones later with the tint tool to add more variety. When I've made a few trees to populate my level, I'll go on to make some props in the next step. Yeah, um, obviously I made a forest already in the last video. So I kind of knew that technique already. Of course, I just used a tree that he had made and cloned it a bunch to make a big forest. Uh, I need to... You know what? Here, I'll show you a technique for making that not happen. I was having trouble getting up... Um up the ledges and stuff easiest well not easiest but one thing you can do is just turn up walkable slope angle for the character so you, when I was first making levels I thought I had to move everything so that it was possible for the character to walk up up it bleh, make it possible for the character to walk up it but in the character you can actually just increase the walkable slope angle so that anything can be traversable. Now, if you're wanting to block off areas, you might not want to do that. See, so now it's a lot easier for this character to walk up the slope, um, and he doesn't doesn't get blocked. So, but if you want to block off areas, but still have the character have a high walkable slope, uh, one thing you can do is make an invisible wall. Um, I'll go ahead and show you my technique for making invisible walls. So, super easy thing you can do. Just turn on sculpt mode. I usually just make a basic rectangle here. Stamp that. Well, that wasn't stamp, unfortunately. I hate how it always defaults to the smear tool. I wish it would always be the stamp tool. But anyway, okay, so stamp it down, exit sculpt mode, and then you gotta tweak it. So you want it to be collidable, otherwise it won't be a wall that will stop the player, but you wanna turn off visibility. Now the problem is it's gonna be invisible now, so you can't interact with it. So you gotta go to show hide and preview invisibility. So then you can see it right now. I'll just, I'll just do this as an, as an example. So say I don't want my character to go this way yet for some reason. Um, I can put down my invisible wall here. Then when I play, you can't see that wall there, but it is there. The character can't go through it. So that's how you make an invisible wall. You just make a shape. Um, you turn off its visibility, but you keep the collision on, and you can block a character from going somewhere. So, however you want to design the level, if you don't want the character to go somewhere yet, 
or just don't let them go somewhere because it's the edge of the map and you don't want them to fall off the edge, um, you can just make an invisible wall that will prevent them. I think I went around it. No, I can't find my invisible wall. <laughs> there it is. So yeah, that's that's the technique I use to make invisible walls. It's it's super duper simple. So anyway, let's get back to watching his videos. To keep things simple, I'm going to assume that this environment is a low-tech one. So I'm going to make some wooden looking pieces that I can build structures from. I only need three basic pieces to build a lot of different stuff. I start with a plank, about two and a half meters long. That's about one story of a building, so I use the puppet as reference for scale. I use a nice dark brown with a wood grainy fleck, so it looks a bit weathered, and set the looseness to variable. That way I get those crafted edges, but maintain the woody texture on the flat parts. You can trim the ends off with a freshly cut wood color to make them look handmade. I do the same to make some chips and chop marks in the wood. I don't go too crazy with those though, as they can look repetitive when you clone them. You can add more once you've assembled the wooden parts into something. To reduce the perfect straightness of the edges, I subtract with a large soft blended shape to warp them slightly. I clone the plank to make a square section post around the same length in a similar style. Make sure you clone in assembly mode and not sculpt mode, so they're separate elements. Since this is a primitive theme, I'll also make a cylindrical stake. I trim one end of this with an angled shape set to subtract to make it pointy like a pencil. With these three things, you can make stairs, platforms, doors, fences, signposts, and all sorts of other stuff. As I assemble them, I rotate the pieces so that any wear and tear I've added doesn't look too repeated. I also customize them, making sure to group them once assembled so I can save them and clone them around. When I furnish the level with these wooden structures, I'll add the finishing touches in the next step. Nice. That was pretty cool how he showed you to make things like that so easily. When you've got your scene to a place you're happy with, it's time to add sprinkles to your cake. I look at the various areas of the scene and where I need to add my feature pieces. Maybe I'll sculpt a giant tree or a giant rock with a skull face for a cave entrance. You can use the paint tools with surface snap to add hand painted details to things. I use that technique to add ivy and roots growing on the earth and walls. I also scope into the handmade structures to add holes and damage. It's always a good idea to think about aging the scene to make it seem lived in. Where would dirt or foliage accumulate over years of use or disuse? Where would people walk the most and wear away the grass? You can even search the Dreamiverse for things other dreamers have made to add to your level. Use the sun and sky gadget to get the atmosphere just how you want it. Add spot and diffuse lights to help the player find their way around. Light the darker corners or highlight your scene's features. I also use the ground chunks or rocks scaled massively to create distant mountains. It's important to remember to add some ambience and spot sound effects to really bring the scene to life. And add some gameplay features too, of course, if that's what you're making the scene for. I'm going to hide some treasure around my scene, set up a score gadget and timer. You can find out how to do that in the scoring tutorial. That's a very simple bit of gameplay. There are millions of other things you could do. Try creating your own scene and then adding it to a dream to publish it. You can use the items I've made from the collection to give you a head start. Thanks for watching my masterclass. I can't wait to see what you create. Until next time, kittens. <laughs> cool. All right.
guess that's the end of it. So anyway, um, yeah, so I showed you some techniques as well as the ones that he showed you. Um, and I learned a few things too, like making the ocean um, as a way to make the world seem more real and not just have a, a, a endless void chasm at the end of the level. You have an ocean, which is a more natural end of the world <laughs> that you reach the ocean that I made earlier but anyway I guess that's it for this tutorial and I hope you learned a bit about how you can make an area in a level in dreams and maybe make an open world something that I want to do someday is is make a game that's kind of an open world with maybe some different dungeons and stuff as well that would be separate levels but anyway that does it for this video on how to make an open world I have been Mac thank you for joining me for a day and remember everything's going to be okay